just for you guys. All right. Welcome to Watch Symposium live streams. I'm Austin. We're here live and we're going to talk about the 2023 Rolex teaser video. It was 20 seconds and I thought it was an awesome teaser. Really pretty satisfying and I'm excited about the releases. One thing before we get into it, uh, the leaks, okay? Well, if you follow uh, at not your watches, like me, you're probably going to be unfollowing him pretty soon. And if you haven't already, uh, you probably will, because it's pretty clear that he did do those in Photoshop. Um, got, you know, fooled a couple of us, fooled uh, many of us. Um, fool, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I'm unfollowing that ass. Uh, so anyway. Those uh, those things are are not going to happen, but these are. And so let me bring up what we're looking at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it all the way through so you guys can hear. Now I'm sure everybody has has heard it and seen it, but just we'll we'll just for those who haven't go all the way through it, and then we're going to take it frame by frame and discuss it. All right, here we go. All right, 20 seconds of Rolex goodness. All right, so what we'll do, and again, let me just drop the link here. And I don't know if anybody's gonna get on or not, but if so, uh, there you go, there's the link for you. Um, but what do we have here, okay? And well, okay, so I think there's a theme about the watch. Okay. So ice, and you can see kind of a watch behind it, ice, snow, that's explore two territory. All right. It, it, well, explore or explore two. Okay. And so I think there's, uh, you know, thematic elements there. So hold on one second. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, there are some interesting comments in in, in this. I'm watching the YouTube video here, and uh, in the comment section, somebody predicted that this is a white dialed Explorer because it does look kind of white, and it could be the Explorer Two. I don't think so. I mean, I think the Explorer Two, uh, you know, has already been updated. Could it be a white dial? Explorer one. I guess it could. Why I don't think it is, is because that's too cool. It's, it's too much. It's too cool for us. I don't think uh, we deserve it. I think Rolex knows that. And I think it's kind of one of those things that's like in their back pocket ammunition for the future, kind of like a white dial sub. It's just, we're not ready for it. And they certainly don't need to do that kind of thing to to uh, sell watches and they're too conservative a company. So I don't really think that that's the case, but it does look like there's some, you know, white going on or they're just faking us out. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with a white dial watch. Okay. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but it does present then this. Now, looking at the bezel, right? It almost looks like an Explorer 2 bezel. It, it almost does. It obviously, if you were looking at the Explorer 2 bezel, you would see the you would see the numerals. But I guess they could have sort of taken those away. But that six there, okay, that six there, okay. So it actually looks a lot like the Milgauss bezel. Hey, watch you are Brian is here. All right, he's jumping on. Hey, Brian. Hey, Austin. 
I, I hope there's not too much background noise. I'm going to mute myself all the time. I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. So, okay. So the bezel to me looked like, like a Milgauss bezel. All right. But obviously I don't think it is a Milgauss unless the Milgauss has a six numeral at the six, which I don't think is going to have that. And if you look at the top, you can see that there's a second hand there and it's not the lightning second hand. So this seems to be clearly a, an explorer. All right. And again, white dial, that was uh, something that somebody said in, uh, you know, it's like a sort of a, an idea, but a, Clearly, I think we're seeing we're seeing the reflection, and it looks like the the dial is dark and the numerals are light. But the question is, what what do they need to do with the Explorer? I have no idea. I mean, it went from thirty nine to thirty six. Good enough. Uh, we've also got a two tone version. This doesn't look two tone. I mean, I guess it could. But so, what are they are they coming out with a different dial color? I think they're too conservative company to do that. So. You know, I don't know what to make of it. All right, hold on a minute. Okay. All right, Brian. Any uh, anything you want to say about this? Um. So at the end of the video, there's a mountain, right? Which would hint yes. at an explorer. Uh -huh. And can I say something about another model or is that you want to take it line by line because I think it's intertwined. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to take it. We're going to go all the way through. And, okay. Because uh, I was, so I yeah. was for another model. I thought that could be a titanium version, but then I think about it again. If you look at how everything is uh, brushed here, that could also be a titanium explorer because it would make sense, you know, you don't need a titanium GMT, you don't need a titanium Daytona, but it could be an Explorer, although that wouldn't be my first guess. Yeah, I mean, it could be. I would think that they would probably keep the titanium for the really big, thick watches. Like the... Um, I agree. Yeah, so so I, I mean, I can't see them doing that. But, but again, I'm not, um, you know, shooting down that idea. I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Now... There are a couple, yeah, somebody else said a titanium explorer. All right. One person says, is is that bev is that bevel on the lug? Um, that is a good question. Let's see. We saw that later on. There's do you see the very pronounced beveling? Yeah, we 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 definitely do. Yeah. But if you go back okay, to that picture, what is interesting, if you look at that dome bezel. It doesn't appear to be polished, right? It, 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 um, and I don't know if that looks like steel or not, but yeah, it's yeah. kind of an interesting structure. Yeah, it's a really weird, right? I mean, it. Um, I guess we could be seeing reflections in it, and yeah, it it looks a little wide for the thirty six millimeter explorer. So, may, do you think maybe they're they're re releasing the thirty nine? Maybe people. You know, just more options. That would be kind of weird, but it would explain the thickness of of the the bezel. But um, and then somebody said a the Oyster Flex bracelet on this. Now again, I I can't imagine that they would do that because well, why? I don't know. I feel like the Oyster. I mean, Oyster Flex bracelet actually winds up on the Daytona. I was going to say the Oyster Flex bracelet. It, it kind of screams water to me because you see it on the Yacht Master, but but the Daytona is certainly not a water going watch and it has it. So I guess it, it could make perfect sense to, to have that. I mean, all of the oysters could work well with a, with an oyster flex, but it would be crazy for the Explorer to have it before the, the sub in my opinion. All right. So we're going to, okay. It's and so then we have, water, right? cause you could think of a, three six nine dial on a sub but doesn't add up because it's certainly not a sub bezel here right yeah yeah design ata hey i love your videos man great to see you he says greetings from aruba whoa nice new look austin all right cool man he's he does some great videos by the way 
with the old like Photoshop and stuff like that and, and very dynamic. So excellent. Thank you for watching. Um, okay, so just like the icy theme, which is explore and explore too, we have ocean here. And it's not deep in the ocean, it's surface, right? It's surface. And of course, what is the ocean? What is if you're gonna stay on the surface of the ocean, Brian, what would you what would you choose? Well, on the surface, you would choose a yacht master, right? Exactly. Exactly. By the way, the, the text, that's, you know, uh, scrolling, we're getting there. Yeah, the, the, the text and the saying and from the, yeah, it's kind of empty. So we're not even going, going over that, but okay. So, all right, so it's got an oyster bracelet. It's got a rotating bezel for sure. Yeah, that has to be a, a submariner or and, a sea dweller, right? Yeah, so look at the way the on the, the bezel insert, it looks like the um, the numerals are coming out, just like on the Yacht Master. You know, I should... I don't know. I what I'm not going to do. It's very tempting because I've got these all pulled up on another another screen. Um, so most people watching have seen has seen the, the yacht master, and so I don't need to do that. So anyway, I, I don't think I will do that. But I was going to actually go and and kind of compare. But if if you don't know what I'm talking about, then maybe pull up in another window the the yacht masters and and they're sort of what would how do you say that Brian? They're the numerals are raised. Yeah, raised, elevated. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. yeah. But it's certainly that's what that mess. Yeah, right. That's what that looks like to me. But what's weird is, do you see? You can see my my cursor here. That is so weird. I I I looked. What is that? You know what I think it is? I think I think the numeral actually goes this way, but they they have it cut off, so you can't quite tell. I think that's yeah. Some, I think it's that's kind of a rendered computer rendered reflection. I think. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, if, so if, if you if you wanted to, what I would do is pull up the the white gold yacht master on the oyster flex, mm -hmm. and 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 see which numeral that could be. But yeah, I, th I think that's just a regular numeral. Yeah, I, I did that, and you can't quite tell because I think this part is darkened. Okay, so somebody said chamfers, and that's Chris T that said that. You're absolutely right. Chris and 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 the the case of this, I mean, it looks like a thick case, but we're we're super close to it. So, you know, my my first inclination was to think it's, it's so thick it looks like a sea dweller, but I don't think so. I think this is pretty clearly a a yacht master. Here, hold, hold on, let me, let me whoa, not got to go back. back. And this is a here. Look at the sides of the case. Do you see that, Brian? They're not polished. No, I, to brushed. me that screams that's, that that screams all titanium yacht master or or, or sea dweller or with sub one hundred percent definitely. Bevel, I mean that that goes back to the deep sea challenge, right? Where you saw that mm -hmm. beveling. If you look yeah. at, I just walked by an AD uh, who had this the Tudor, uh, the titanium Tudor. Uh, this this looks exactly like this. Design ATA has it yeah embossed i think that's the term for it embossed yeah there's a couple of terms for it we're talking about the the raising of the the bezel insert yeah but the deep sea challenge has the champ chamfers and has the brushing and apparently titanium is really hard to work with and so maybe that's why they char chose to do the brushing but it's kind of interesting because yeah i mean I'm not really sure about yacht masters, but um, they, you know they don't really on the on the newer watches, they don't have chamfers, and so that was one of the things that blew my mind about the deep sea challenge. That 50 millimeter watch, it had chamfers, and I thought, wow, are chamfers coming back? I think chamfers are coming back on the titanium watches, but not on the steel watches. And you gotta wonder why they do that. Is it tough to have like brushing on the top, brushing on the side? 
and and do, you know is is that is that transition hard to do on titanium and so they they think well if we have the chamfer here that's polished it's just it's a little easier i'm not sure but it just seems to be a titanium thing so i think this I, is a go ahead i think it's all brushed even the chamfering and I, and i understand what you mean but basically if you want to you're saying it might be difficult to generate the crisp edge you know if you stamp out a block of titanium but with the chamfering it's probably even more delicate to do so you got then two edges right and then they're, they're merging sort of true so so true. i think it's all i think it's just rolex saying hey you know titanium we can never really polish it to the same extent i mean it's probably going to depend whether it's grade two three or whatever five titanium but probably their way is just, you know, it's an utilitarian watch. It's going to be all titanium, all brushed. And I think Chamfers might as well see a comeback at some point. This is typical Rolex. They know exactly what they should give us. And they mm -hmm. give us a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but never the full-blown experience. Yeah, yeah. I, it, something just hit me. Okay, so if titanium is hard to deal with, and so they've chosen the brushing, because it's, maybe it's a little easier to do, I'm not really sure. But if they had the brushing on the side and the brushing on the top, it would be too much brushing. So maybe that's why they introduced the chamfers because it allows them to give us a little bit of polishing on that case, but just a little bit. They don't have to, uh, it, it's much less effort for them to polish the chamfer versus mm -hmm. the whole flanks of the entire case. And also what's, what it appears if you look a bit closer, unfortunately, at least the view that I have, it's it's obstructed by your picture and mine, but the era, the crown guard era, the top of that crown guard era seems to be um, seems to be polished, but that might as well just be a reflection as well. And that's actually, if you look at the the current production subs, right there, they're brushed on top, if I'm not mistaken, but just that little era around the crown guards, that's actually polished. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can't see it on this picture, but could be, could be. All right. Is this a better, what do you guys like? Is this better? I'm not, it's a bigger picture like this, but yeah, I don't know. We'll do this because I'm not abstracting the picture. All right. So I'm pretty sure this is a, a Yacht Master oyster bracelet size, no telling. Um, somebody brought up Ben Ainsley, the, 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 uh, he's a, what is Sailor, sailor, yacht, yachter, um, yeah, sailor. I believe that's what it's called. And uh, yeah, we we knew we were gonna get one sometime, and so it just makes sense that this very well is it. But I think his is on a, I think his is on a NATO strap, right? But but it's just yeah. he's testing it. That's why he probably just likes NATO straps more. Yeah, and I think it it kind of kind of makes sense. I was hoping. I mean, this is all speculation, but I was hoping to have one of these on an oyster flex that would be super cool super light watch and can do whatever don't have to worry about the strap don't have to worry about the case yeah so yeah all right so moving on i think all right so looking at this and uh all right so again we we have we have like you know a theme it sort of introduces something and when you look at this what do you see gold <laughs> yes you know you know the, so, the awesome powers movie gold gold member what is it called i like gold <laughs> um, yeah um i thought it was sand at first and then i thought it was gold and then i thought it looks like sand with gold flaking on top whoops hold on wrong button okay okay so if you if you kind of scroll through it almost it almost looks like there's sand and then as the footage is going there's gold being sprinkled look at it yeah kind of like little bits of gold little pieces sort of, of gold yeah. right i mean that could be that could be that could be sand or it could be i mean hell that could be gold dust it could be just you know gold powder um but anyway it's it's clearly related to this dial all right and you know the thing is this this could be titled sand or like 
something sandy i don't know i, I don't know how corny they're going to get with their dial names like uh sandy sunset or something like that i don't think they're going to get that corny but you got gold on sand right the gold being the coronet and this is the sand so is that what we saw in that earlier footage sand with gold on top could be could be yeah what do you uh, think yeah. what do you think this is now a lot of people are saying that this is going to be a an orange dial or sand dial i don't know um it looks orange but you know they always come up with cool names but uh a lot of people are saying that there, this is going to be a oyster perpetual like with an orange dial i don't think so i mean it's, it looks like a yellow gold coronet and uh i think we'll see more in the teaser later on but this looks a bit more dressy to me yeah so this could be a woman's watch this could be a date just all right and the reason i say that is and again i'm i i really can't pull it up right now it'll it'll get too cumbersome you have to take my word for it look at it later um viewers on your own time but the distance between the coronet right here and the text is very short all right it's much shorter than on the oyster perpetuals unless this is a small oyster perpetual or it's a woman's watch or it's a date just but and we haven't seen anything well there's nothing explicit about the Milgauss on the entire teaser. And that could be, as my friend pointed out, because the Milgauss is, is so obvious. I mean, you see one, you see the green GV glass, you're going to know what it is. You see the second hand, you're going to know what it is. It, it just, it's real hard to do a teaser with that. And so do you, th I mean, do you think that this could be the Milgas, and, and here's why I say that, okay? Because the Milgas has a lot of writing up top and the, the distance between the Coronet and Rolex is very short because they got to fix, fit Milgauss in there. So if you check out a Milgauss, you'll notice that there's a, a really short distance between the, the Coronet and the, yeah. the top of the Rolex. But that I would be... I don't know, but to me, this 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 looks just too dressy to be a yeah, Milgauss. Yeah. And and it, you know, the, the, again, the coronet seems to be yellow gold. I mean, that might be just you know the reflection or whatnot. And then the yeah. dial, it doesn't seem to be like a solid orange dial. And I mean, we mm. never know what Rolex does, right? Look at last yeah, week. Yeah. Yeah. That dial could be. It looks not a, like a stone dial or something. So I don't think they would put that on the Milgauss. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm you're convincing me that I, I'm probably wrong there. I, another thing I was thinking though, is that the, the Milgauss has the orange second hand. And so I thought, what if they like reverse the color? You got the orange dial and then the, I don't know, blue second hand. I mean, I, I know that's kind of a little too crazy for Rolex probably. And I don't know if it would really work. And, and that would, I mean, I'm not seeing GV glass here. So anyway, I just, my my only issue with the idea that this is an oyster perpetual is just the the distance between the coronet and and the text. But again, that could be answered if it's a, just a small uh, oyster perpetual or if it's a ladies' model. So, I would even say it could be something super dressy, if you know what I mean. Super dressy. Oh, as in the dressy dressiest of the dressies. The Chilini yeah. line, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that's coming up. Let's see. All right. Here we are. But maybe I'm wrong. Hey, maybe this is just a new color variation of the Datejust, or maybe they do a two-tone oyster perpetual. Who knows? Okay, so here we have a have a sunrise or a sunset again on sand. Yeah, I don't know if that relates to what we just saw that dial. But that thing that hits it on city the nail, view. Austin, that hits it on the nail. That dial is the, mimicking that sunset. So they could call it a sunset dial because you asked about how, how could they call it. That's a sunset dial or a special type of stone dial. It's sort of sandwiched in between the, the sand pictures. You know, you got the close up of the sand and the gold and then you got that, you know, this. This right here, that's. I think sand, you know? Yeah, maybe, maybe. 
I can't wait to see what the what the dial color is named. You know, is it sunset? Is it sand? Then we've got a cityscape. You can see a mountain in the background. As I scroll through frame by frame. Okay. All right. Here you go. I think this confirms that we're going to have a yacht master for sure. I mean, that's a yacht, right? Is this what was connected to the titanium yacht master? That is that what you were connecting this? Yeah, this bit? yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of weird that they separated it though. Why did they do that? Just to throw because us off a bit. They're playing tricks with us, Austin, because they yeah. want to keep us busy. Right, right. If they had, had sandwiched the 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 surface water then with the picture of the titanium watch and then this yeah. it would be clear but that would be a little too easy for us right exactly no, it I would think be so have... weird yeah it would be so weird if they didn't have a yacht master and they had this footage wouldn't that be weird if they did that yeah i mean uh, i don't know maybe they all <laughs> with us <laughs> they 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 inverse the color and suddenly it's not a yacht but a plane and then it's uh, whatever so no, but <laughs> more seriously speaking, I really think that that's a very clear sign. Yeah. Okay. We've got another piece of, you know, surface water ocean. I think this is just, you know, I think they're pretty explicit with it, with the yacht master. Cause we we've seen the one on Ben Ainsley's wrist and it's like, they know, everybody knows we know, they know, we know, and we know they, I mean, everybody knows it. So I, I think maybe that's why they're, yeah, okay, being explicit. All right, so here we go. Now, first, when I first saw this, I thought, okay, no, just, I don't think it's a Milgauss, obviously, but I thought Milgauss because I saw the blue, all right? But then I immediately saw the second hand and I thought, okay, well, that's certainly not the second hand of a Milgauss. Do you... Sorry, yeah, I would, I would again go very dressy here. <laughs> okay, so you think this? Thinking, you know, day day blue dial, but that's more wishful thinking because you know we saw those renderings of a, what was it, I think rose gold day day with a blue dial. But you're right, the 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 seconds hand is is, is very different to day day. And again, the, there's not very much space between the coronet and Rolex, and and if you look at a um, Easter Perpetual, there's much more space. Again, unless you're talking about the small watches and, and uh, that that might account for it. So, yeah, um, I, I don't know what to make of this. Uh, I mean, it's got a gold second hand. I mean, I guess this could – it doesn't look like a Cellini to me at all, meaning it's um, blue is – Cellini would have a, a, a fancier dial. This looks like just a, a sunburst blue. So perhaps date just, perhaps day date, something like that. Look at that R. Does that R look a little bit different than your typical Rolex R? It does. So I didn't catch that, Austin. Okay, so that R looks a little bit different than your typical Rolex R because usually what happens, the, the R, this leg goes down and it just sort of, I don't know if it ta if it if it flares out like this. I just thought this was a sort of an interesting looking R. Uh, the font looks a little bit different than than the R's on other watches I, I've might, seen. Might as well be the, just the perspective, though. Yeah, could be, or or it could be the fact that we're so just so close to it. All right, and now we have an oyster bracelet brushed, and those are very small thin lug so this is definitely not a sub it's definitely not a gmt it but it's got to be it's got to be a, a a sports watch now oyster perpetuals have totally brushed um oyster oyster bracelets they just do not uh milgauss doesn't the air king does but i don't think we're gonna see an air king so i don't know what to make of that that okay it, it, so that can't be a date date just, and that can't be a day date. Oyster Perpetual. I mean, if it goes with 
with this. Whoops. Right. I mean, I guess this could be an oyster perpetual because this is, I mean, if, if these two are connected, because this is certainly not a day date, otherwise the polished middle links, right? It would have the polished middle links and it's certainly not a, 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 a what do you call it? A, a day date. So sports watch, um, utilitarian watch, and, and look at those lugs. So I don't know what to make of that. Hmm. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's, that's an interesting one. It doesn't look like a sub because the lugs are very, very thin. You, you know what? Okay, I am in denial that they're showing us women's watches because I'm like, don't, don't show us women's watches. But that could make sense because this could be a women's watch that could account for the Cornet being so close to the Rolex logo. And then look, this could be like a 28 millimeter watch or, or like 31 probably. So it could be a Oyster Perpetual. Although I think they already have, wait, they've got, they've got a blue dial, but they don't have the blue and gold, right? They have the, it's like blue and silver, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, could that be, could that be, um, rose gold that'd be crazy if they if if they had okay so you know how one of the the oyster perpetuals has gold hands i think it's the the silver dial and it's yellow gold it looks a bit rose to me right wouldn't that be crazy if they if they used a little bit of rose gold on the the hands and the indices and the coronet on an otherwise steel oyster perpetual that could be kind of cool. That's that's cool. what I said before. Oops, the only reason pressing. that could be an OP would be would be a two tone OP. Hmm. Two tone OP. Yeah, but they're not going to do that, right? And no, but they also not... didn't want to do an Explorer one two tone, and then boom. But yeah, I, I, that wouldn't be my first bet. No, but just to, to elaborate on your thought. Hmm. All right. Let's see. Oh. Oh, hey. Underachieving watch collector. Hey, this is a great comment. Another lefty. Look at the shadow. He's talking about this right here. Oh, that would I mean that would be crazy if they had a lefty oyster perpetual. What if like left-handed watches started to be a thing throughout the the different lines? That would be <laughs> Yeah, could be. But I don't, I don't, I don't see that coming. I don't. Uh, well, you I don't either. <laughs> yeah. I don't either. You know, Jean. What? What is his name? Dufour. Jean Paul. Jean Frederic or something. Dufour, ah, that's yeah. it. Jean Frederic Dufour. He's left-handed, right? And so, that would be interesting if he's like, "Damn it, customers need left-handed options." You know, he he's had to suck up right right handed watches all his life and he's like now that he's ceo he you know he can he can fill fill the the different lines with with a, a lefty i don't think it would happen i tell you what if they did do that if they had like a you know left-handed uh day just and a left it just one option it would really take the wind out of the sprite the, all of a sudden the sprite would be not so cool and zany and unique anymore it would just be like the left-handed version yeah, I think it could be something that they that they say we want to quote unquote democratize watches, as you know, society seems to do with so many things nowadays. And mm -hmm. then you could argue you want to have more than just one option, which is a sports watch, basically. But you also want to have a more not dressy again, but you know, more generic watch maybe as well. Um, yeah, could be. I, I don't see it coming, but hey, could be. All right, there's a comment right here. We should highlight real quick. He says, my, I, my AD swears that there will be new OP colorways. And um, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, somebody said it was the 90th anniversary of the OP line, which I don't know if that's true. Yeah, or not. I think it's an, I, I read that somewhere. Um, yeah, 1934, and, 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 I think, right? And if you look at that orange or that sunset dial, whatever you want to call it, that, I mean, that could be unisex, but it might as well be a smaller um watch which could would then be a, a women's watch right but again it doesn't make sense to have that sort of dial on that on that all brushed op or whatever it is that you just show me 
couple yeah. of seconds ago. Yeah, you're you're talking about one. And and the thing is, it's interesting because they might be showing us the the female version of that watch. Um, because yeah, again, uh, I'm talking about the the distance between the coronet and the and the and the text, but it doesn't mean that it it wouldn't come out in a 41 or a 36. And if that came out, I mean, I think 41 is what most people like, but I like the 36. But how cool would that orange dial be on an Oyster Perpetual? Yeah, people would go ape shit. Yeah, <laughs> they would go crazy. They would go crazy, and especially they go crazy not only because it's really eye catching, because they think it's going to be a year and it's going to be gone, just like the other, you know, Stella dials. So where are we? All right. Yeah. So there we are. All right. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry. Press the wrong button. Okay. It goes fast. This is a quick 20 seconds. All right. Damn it. All right. And here you go. Here you go. Okay, now this is the big one right here, to me at least, because I just, you know, I love GMTs. So this is clearly a GMT, and you you can barely see it. In fact, I can't even hardly see it on my screen. I have to look above my monitor and kind of look down because it's really in the shadows. But that's clearly a GMT hand, and clearly a GMT bezel, and. Does that look rose gold or regular gold to you? White gold, white, not white gold, uh, yellow gold or rose gold? It's possible to yeah, tell really, but. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. Yeah. Uh, but, so the bezel looks more, uh, I don't want to, it's 50 50 in this show, but I would say yellow if I would have to put my money. Okay, some people are but saying right now, rose gold. Right now, right now we got the, right now we got the root beer, whatever they call it, which is two tone, and they got. Do they still have the full rose gold? Yes, they do. So might as, this might as well be a full yellow gold. Yeah, so think about this color scheme. How cool would this look? Yellow gold with a totally black bezel insert with just the numerals um, in, in yellow gold. And that, it would be could exactly, that could exactly be it, yeah. Going back to what is it, the... One six seven one eight. Yeah. Uh, one six seven one eight. Actually, that's a wrong reference. Oh, that's a reference. solid gold one. It, yeah, that's yeah. the solid gold one. Yeah, or or the or the sixteen seven one three, right? Two tone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now another thing is this could just be your standard everyday um, root beer, but it's coming out on the Jubilee bracelet, and they're just like you know. They or show us you that have the full yellow gold with the Jubilee. Full yellow gold with the yeah yeah, right. I mean, it would just be weird if, if they were to do that because again, rose gold, ever rose gold, is sort of the GMT thing, and yellow gold is the sub thing, and and they haven't mixed and matched yet. Now again, when those leaks well, came out, well, I mean. That, you know, mm -hmm. when the first first ceramic sports watch that came out was in what is in oh five or oh seven, I can't remember. Uh, was the GMT right? And they had mm -hmm. that on anniversary green dial, and it was all yellow gold. And again, going back to the pre ceramic era, apologies for the background noise. Um, th th this was also yellow gold. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, it certainly could happen. I'm all over the place here, but I just want to um, highlight this. This is on the orange dial just above the coronet is a day window. Uh, let, I know we're we're all over the place, but let's just look at that because it could be. It could be. But I'm not convinced. Yeah. But worth noting, I mean, that would make it a day date. It could be a special day date, yeah. Right, right. All right. But anyway, that's, yeah. That's what I'm most excited about. I mean, 
I guess we can talk about works what, what we're excited about, but this is it right here because you know, I'm seeing two things I love. A ceramic bezel that probably rotates and I, I again I'm making a, an assumption there and the GMT hand. Oh, and the GMT hand now, again, I, I can't even see it from here, but if you look up, it almost looks like it's red, which if it, if there was a Coke, it would have to be like a two-tone Coke or, or an all gold Coke. Oh, that could work actually. Would the colors work there? Because look, uh, to me, to me, to me, to me, it looks like uh, not, not the red arrow. And also a Coke with, with gold um, numerals on the bezel. That doesn't make sense, no? Hmm. I, I mean, the thing is, they, they use full gold for like anniversary type things and for like sort of special uh, kind of looking at the past sort of things. And 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 so that would be, a, I think, a, a good way to introduce the Coke because it's very historical. It's almost like the Coke is a little too special to be introduced on the in a steel version. Arguably, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Coke came out. What you said it in a recent video. What, what was it? The one six, the fat lady, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then the the one six seven one zero. And I, every, I mean, I don't think the Coke's more special than the Pepsi, and you know. Well, they, they were holding back on the Coke, right? So if, first and foremost, I don't think the Coke is more special than the Pepsi. The Pepsi is DGMT, and that's it. Yeah, and yeah. They, what's, what's kind of interesting, though, is that they were holding back to release that model in ceramic up until now, at least, because the reason that they didn't put out the Pepsi for a long time, or only in small numbers in white gold, is because they had trouble... You know, having that one piece of serochrome, as they call it, in blue and in red, because they had to cover basically one color had to cover the other, and that issue didn't persist. That wouldn't be an issue with with the black and red combo, and decided to go with the black and blue, which is the Batman. But they could have just released the Coke before they released the Pepsi. For some reason, they didn't, and I think the reason is because a true GMT true in my opinion is a, is a Pepsi, but yeah. 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 Going a bit on, off on a tangent here. No, no, I think it's important because I, I think if, if you're just sort of um, your typical customer that, that knows about the GMT line, it, the quintessential, quintessential GMT is, is the Pepsi. But I think if you're really, you know, you, you, you're deep into it, kind of, kind of like me a little too much into it, then, then, then the Coke is the GMT master too. Right. And then, and then the, yeah, true. That's the more you know what I mean. But but most people don't think like that. Most people just say, "Hey, GMT, what what do you what is the archetype Pepsi?" So quite a few people are saying, "Okay, William Rizzo is saying Gold Coke." I wouldn't be surprised, but I just don't know if that how that would look. I can't even picture it in my mind a, a, a solid gold Coke with the red and the and the and the and the gold. I guess it could look pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, it's hard for me to imagine, but uh, you Matt, might be right. Matt, could be. Matt Lindell says uh, GMT Coke. Uh, hey, Austin, and then... I have to step out for a couple of minutes. Have mm -hmm. to, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself and I'll, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay. Maybe sooner right, or later. Good. Sorry. No problem. All right. I might uh, drop the link, see if anybody else is, is out there that wants to jump on. Now, what I thought was kind of weird is, and it could just be the reflection, but those gold surrounds look kind of rough around the edges. It could just be the image, but e even if it is, you know, just the reflection, kind of surprising um, that it's, uh, you know, not, not a little bit better. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Oh, okay. You have to talk about this. All right, so this is for sure a Cellini, okay? Uh, because of the crown, and if and if you go over and you check out the Cellini, is the Moon phase? That's the only one in the catalog right now. It's got that, you know, that fluted bit right here, not on top of the the bezel like Datejust and 
day dates, but kind of on the side. In fact, this looks just like the Cellini moon phase. And so we're going to get more Cellinis. All right. I think it's pretty clear. Are they going to update the... All right. He says... It says Wes, but don't let... I don't know. <laughs> I get you. You. It's cut off here. Somebody's trying to jump on. Should I let him on? Here we go. All right. <laughs> hey, man. Is this Wes? I don't know if this is Wes. It says Wes, but don't let me in. Okay. All right. Um, Wes uh, from Texas is who I thought that was. And if Wes P is, uh, meaning I thought it was Wes P. Anyway, anyway, all right, back to. Uh, and I'm, I'm back for a couple more minutes if you want to talk and then I'll, I'll jump off. I don't know. Um, I don't want to. Sure, sure. Yeah. So what I was just. Stay your show, but. Yeah, no, I mean, just how, however long you can stay and jump off when you got to jump off. But Cellini. Okay, so this is a Cellini. And I don't know if they're going to update the moon phase. I don't know if we're going to get new Cellinis. I don't know if it's going to be one Cellini, two Cellinis. I don't know if they're just going to start filling in the whole, uh, you know, page because it says, what does it say, uh, Brian? It says something like the Cellini line. That's the way they phrase yeah. it. I recently, you know, <clears throat> looked at the catalog and in the very beginning, there's lots of blah, blah about Rolex and stuff, but you have an overview um, basically of what's in the catalog. And on the right hand side, I think it said, Celine you're, you're, a, we can barely hear you. Can you, I don't know if you okay. can turn up your One mic. Sec. Up. One yeah. Sec. Yeah, sure. Is it better now? Yeah, much better. Much oh, better. Okay. All right. Yeah, they, they call it the, the Cellini collection is what they call it in the Rolex catalog. And I don't know what they say in the dictionary, but collection would infer that there's more than one one piece usually, right? Yeah, yeah. So that would make sense that the moon phase is a placeholder. And the moon, you know, look, okay, I think it's clear we're going to get a Cellini now. If it doesn't have a decorated movement, then um, I'm going to be really disappointed because they're just going back. And that was the worst part of the the, the Cellinis. I mean, they weren't autorology. They did, they couldn't compete with with Patek or any any watches with decorated uh, display case back movements. But then we were talking. You and I were talking, and you 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 don't think that they're going to do that because you, you don't think they really can do that. The hand, the machining, uh, talk about that for a second. I don't know if he's still here, but what Brian was saying is he was saying that. Can you hear me Austin? Yeah. Yeah. You're back. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Rolex is used to have closed case backs on the professional models, and they still do. It makes mm -hmm. sense, right? And the dress watches, Patek and stuff, they also had closed case backs in the past. It was only after, I guess, the, the quartz crisis and stuff, when they repositioned themselves and they started showing off those movements. Patek always decorated their movements or finished them, you know, for the Geneva seal and that stuff, for those requirements to fulfill them. But they did it. They they basically did a hand finishing, and Rolex. I mean, they would have to hire armies of people to do so. And unless they say, you know what, we'll finish those movements, but we'll finish them in an industrial manner, which is basically what Omega does. And Omega shows their movements on the Sapphire Sandwich Speedmaster, for example. One sec. They could obviously do that, but they would, by doing so, sort of expose a quote-unquote weakness because people would go and say, yeah, that's a nicely decorated movement, but A, it will be never be decorated to the same extent of finished as a Patek Vacheron or a Pius, and also it what the, the finishing would have been done by machines. So you would expect basically show that into rub it into people's face. So someone will take off their Cellini and say, "Look at the movement. 
And then the other guy across the table would say, yeah, but, you know, where's the Geneva seal? I can't see it. So, and I don't think they want to compete with Paddock on that price point because, you know, if you buy a time-only watch with Paddock, it's 30K, right? Give or take. And if you would go for the same price point, you would have to offer the same sort of quality. And if you don't, that's an inferior product. So maybe the, the way to do it is to say, hey, we know how to design beautiful dress pieces, but we know our spots and we're not going to not going to pretend we're, we're all the horology. Right. And then and, and, and so that that could be basically the, the vacuum that exists right now. And that could be the spot that you're trying to fill. OK, yeah. So, oh, that's that's really interesting. OK, because, OK, basically, if they do a display case back, they're going to have to use the machines. I mean, actually, they wouldn't have to, right? But if if they're gonna if they're gonna pump them out like they do their their other pieces, then they would have to use machines. Now, if they use machines, then it would what Brian is saying. And let me I'm just reiterating what he says. Uh, um, it would be kind of like Omega, right, or Omega, and those are nice, but they're not like hand finished movements like um, like Patek or or really like fine fine horological pieces. But if Rolex started making, I don't know, uh, Cellini's, but like small batch Cellini's, I know it's very uncharacteristic of Rolex, but can you imagine if they had production numbers of the Cellini's similar to that of Patek? It would work. They could do it. It, it, would, it would be kind of weird because you'd have sort of their utilitarian oysters and the subs and the GMTs and all those watches that, you know, they're making a million of those a year. And then all of a sudden they would have, you know, this Cellini line that is hot horology, small batch, hand done, and they could do it and it would sell like mad and they'd be able to charge a massive amount for one of these watches. I'm talking probably a hundred thousand USD, but I think you're absolutely right. If they were to, do the display case back, but lazily do it. And by lazily, I mean, uh, you know, like you say, Brian, use machines to do it. It could actually bite them in the ass and, and they could, they could look like they're trying to do yeah, what the tech is doing. Yeah. And what and, Rolex never did is that, in my opinion, they never pretended to be something that they're not. And this is why they're so successful. Right. So the only Rolex watch with a case back, a display case back is the Cellini Prince. They make they made four different versions. And the one you're looking at right here is, is in my opinion, it was the best of them. Um, I've I have a lot of issues with the watch. I don't I think the I hate the hands. I hate the I hate the way that the the second hand reaches way past the second markers. But you know, it does have this sort of small little back and, it, and it's a beautiful movement, but you know, they, they totally use machinery on that. And so it kind of, this, this watch is a bit of an embarrassment when you put it next to a Patek because again, it's not, it's like, it looks the part, but when you, when you think about how they did it, it's kind of embarrassing. They probably would have used, you know, again, machines and, and that kind of thing. So we don't want this, right? We don't want them to go back to this. And but it could be if, Austin. Maybe I'm wrong, right? Because there's a case in point that did it in the past, right? And machining versus hand finishing is one dimension, and the other dimension is how much do you finish? Like, do you black mirror finish the screws, the 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 bottom of the screws, all that stuff? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, if, if you guys are curious, these are the these are three of the versions. This has a very like 1920s look to it. This, this white gold one. And uh, this is the best, I think the five, four, four, zero. And I think this must be rose gold. Not bad. These three are all pretty nice. Although this looks a little bit too much like, you know, the great Gatsby, but there's also this one, which I, I this looks like, a grill of a car to me. I'm, I'm not a fan of this one. I think this is the worst of the bunch, but um, bottom line, we'll get out of this. But 
if Rolex does the Cellini line, okay, my opinion, they have to have a display case back. They have to have a beautiful movement. All right. If they don't, I mean, just screw it. You know, you might as well just be giving us the, the, the garbage Cellini is that you were trying to pedal five years ago, right? Don't want it. But if it, even if it does have the, the display case back, the question is, is it hand done? Is it, does it look like machine done or is it hand done? And are they going to go the artisans route and have like small batch, you know, kind of stuff, or are they going to try to keep up the production numbers of their Cellini with the, the oysters? And also, and if they do, uh, you're a little bit low. If they do that, if they do that, then they're not going to be able to compete with Patek and, and, and it will be an embarrassment. You think Rolex is, is for, well, you, you'd think that they would be forward thinking enough to, to imagine that, but maybe they, maybe they think, well, we won't really notice if it's not hand finished, if it's like kind of machine done. I mean, it the seems kind thing, of stupid that see, they, the that they thing, would mm -hmm. go ahead. Sorry. The other thing to think about is what would be inside the watch? What complication? Cause would you start with a time date only, which you launch the whole line, which you, if you do that, then you have to go into complications. Now they know how to do an annual calendar. They do the sky dweller. Um, what would they do, right? So that's the second option, uh, second thing to consider. Where they could, you know, they could recreate some of the some of the calendar watches they had in the past, which uh, it's got a name to it, but you know, with the little date, the the month window, and it's a very very expensive watch. So those are like a hundred thousand, yeah. if not more. So they could do that. And and by the way, on a on a side note, the phrase perpetual 1908 was registered and i i typed in perpetual 1908 and i saw some kind of cool in fact i'll try to pull them up right here um let's see hey austin i'll have to run now but it was great talking i, I hope there wasn't too much echo and disturbance in the in the background no, it, was, it was great to have you man thank you for jumping on and Hopefully we can do it again in the future. Thank you. I appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Have a good one, Austin. You too. Bye Take bye. care. Okay. All right. So let me open this in a, in a new tab and show you guys. All right. So basically this, all right. And that's a watch from 1908. Okay. So if they registered that, that, term perpetual 1908 they could be looking at this aesthetic for the cellinis right and maybe and perhaps they they could release something like that which would be a very simple watch time only um it would look a lot better than this uh much more fancy but you know they they, they could have you know, hands like that and and a dial like that i mean it would just be an updated version you know it would it would fit 2023 and then of course, if they had the, the, the display case back now, I don't imagine that they would go for the co crazy complications at first. In fact, they, again, 1908 was the date that they first started using Rolex. All right. So it's like the birth of the Rolex name. And so if they were to, you know, make a Cellini line and sort of revisit their past and do it kind of chronologically, you would get something like this. And this could make a beautiful Cellini if they were to, you know, update it. And, you know, this is all wacky colors and it just looks kind of old and, and, you know, patinaed in kind of a gross way, but something like this, right. And if they took off, then again, as they fo follow that timeline, then you would get those more complicated pieces if it was successful. So, yeah, um, that will. I'm out of everything besides the GMT. What I'm most interested in is this and the Cellini and the Cellini line and how what they're going to do, how they're going to take it. Are they really going to try to honestly compete with Patek, 
or are they going to pretend to compete with Patek, right? Because that watch that I showed you, that's uh, well, not square, but that rectangular uh, 5440 from, you know, the early 2000s with that little display case back, that was a, that was a piss poor attempt at hot horology. I mean, you got to give them credit for it. And it's kind of cool, you know, to have one of those watches would be kind of cool because it's the only Rolex with a display case back. But it just, it, the, the thing that really sealed it for me is, you know, I was actually thinking of getting the 5440 and they had a unpolished box and papers piece. It was eight grand here in Japan. This is years ago. And I, while I was thinking about getting it, I saw the um, Patek, what is it? The, uh, it's the square Patek, somebody in the comment section, help me out. Um, the gondola, gondolo or gondola, I think. And that is just so much better. And the opposite, the movement side with the display case back is just so much more beautiful. It just, it just put the 5440 to shame. It just, it just really made you realize what a, what a, a poor attempt at hot horology that was. So if Rolex does that, it's going to be embarrassing, but they don't have to, right? If, if they, if they do it right and they have, you know, a Cellini line that, that is like artisan pieces, kind of like, you know, I mean, like Omega does that, right? Omega does that with their three, two, one movement, uh, Speedmaster. That's sort of an artisan, uh, Speedmaster. So, you know, brands can do that. They can have, you know, they're kind of more mass produced type watches, and then they can have sort of the, the nice like artisan thing. And if you're going to do artisan, then the Cellini line is what you want to do artisan with, and you have to do it right. So that is what I can't wait to see. All right, let's see. Let's continue on. We're going frame by frame. Of course, that's um, okay. And then we get to pretty much, I, I think, just about the last, the last thing. And and again, we got the theme of a road and racing Daytona, right? And then it kind of phases into this. You know, it's like going going around a racetrack, but here you're going around this like dial as if it's a racetrack, and you're going really quick and. What can we say? It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a ice blue dial. All right. We've got a super chat here from Shamba Basher. Thank you, man. He says, explore one looks like Oyster Flex. So all gold. Ah, um, yeah, yeah. Well, if I had to guess, I can't imagine why they would do that. I mean, they had the two tone. Why would they be doing that? That would be weird. But I didn't, I didn't understand the two-tone. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine. Like I said, the, the Oyster Flex, I just would be so surprised to, to see that on, uh, on, on the Explorer. And, and I don't even know if you could do it with like a 36 millimeter watch, you know, it'd be kind of weird if they, you know, upped it, to, not, not upped it to 39, they wouldn't go, you know, back down at 36 and then up to 39, but they, they could come out with a 39 millimeter version. I really would be surprised if they did that because it would almost dilute the, the identity of the Explorer. And, and I don't think they want to do that. I think, I think they wanted to get rid of the 39 millimeter version. So for them just to re-release it, um, it would be very surprising to me. And I would be very, very surprised if, if I were to, uh, if we were to see the, the Oyster Flex on, on that, um, but hey, I mean, they put it on the damn Daytona. I mean, so the Oyster Flex makes no sense on the Daytona. If you're asking me, the Oyster Flex, in my opinion, should should be for what are going watches, yacht masters, in, anything you go under the surface with. So so Submariner so and um, you know Deep Sea and and uh, Sea Dweller. So you know, thank you, Shamba. I really appreciate that. All right, and where were we? Yes, we were racing around the ice blue or sky blue dial. This could be, 
that uh, you know the platona. I, mean, I think the platona has this this color, huh? Anyway, I think we are going to get a Daytona of some some sort, although we don't know anything about it except for the uh, the color of the dial. And, and you can actually you can see the the re hot there and. Well, look, look at that right there. I mean, that looks to be not not like the color of Platona. That, that looks to be either rose gold or yellow gold. So blue dial, yellow gold, or rose gold Daytona could be. Right, but Daytona for sure. Look at the uh, re-hot right there. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be gold. Okay, so it's got to be. Or it could be a uh, what is it the 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 copper watches what is it the brass watches what what is it I can't even remember but the the ones that like patina and get all nasty no Rolex is not going to do that I don't think they'll leave Tudor to 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 do that what is that the bronze yeah that's what I'm thinking of bronze right no yeah look at that. Uh, that right there, that that looks looks like yellow gold or rose gold. I think. All right, and then we've got you know typical Rolex wording challenge and in a you know snowy scene right here. I think this is pretty much it. I don't think there's any more watches in this. Oh, okay, and then. They have mountains and, you know, rugged, adventurous mountains in just about all of their, you know, ads and and uh, teasers. So this is pretty much par for the course. Minute, uh, second 17. This is it. Yep. And this is it. Okay. So, all right. Well, there we go. Um, drop your comments, any questions you have. We're going to wrap it up very soon, but now's your time to talk or, you know, give your opinion about things. What are you excited about? I'll get the ball rolling. I'm excited about the Cellinis. All right. I can't wait to see what the Cellinis are like. More because it's a bit of like drama. It's like a soap opera, you know, will it have the display case back? And if so, will it be good or lame? And that's going to be awesome. And it could go really lame or it could go really cool. All right. Another super chat from Shamba. Thank you, man. He says, Austin, you are the best mate. Shamba, thank you for watching. You're, you're a great viewer. And uh, I recognize you from past live streams. So thank you for supporting the channel. Appreciate it. So I am, I'm definitely, I'll leave that up. I'll leave that up. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to the Cellini because of the, the, the sort of the drama of it. You know, what will this Cellini, will it, will it land or will it be a flop, right? Same thing with the Milgauss. And, and we, you know, we didn't see anything as far as like the Milgauss goes. We, we got no teaser there. I mean, the Milgaus might be going away, right? That's crazy. I mean, I can't believe that. Boy, it's going to become really collectible, I would say. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, we'll come back to that. Stevie, GMT, great work, Austin. He says, Stevie, thank you so much for watching, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the live show. But when it comes to the, the Milgaus, if 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 it does if it is discontinued, you're going to see a huge spike on the, you know, the secondhand market at first. Is it going to stay like that? That's the thing. I mean, for example, the all black GMT, the ceramic one, it shot up and then it went down. Now it's kind of going up naturally. And, and here's one that, you know, it should be kind of special, but the the turnograph. I mean, the turnograph is the father of all of these watches. So from a historical perspective, it's the most 
was one of the most important Rolexes, period, right? They discontinued that. It It's not going for what you would think a discontinued historically important watches would go for. I mean, for 14,000, you know what you can get? You can get a two-tone, uh, two-tone, one of those, not limited edition, one of those Japan only green accented two-tone turnographs for 14 grand. I mean, that's, they made 300 of the black doll version versions, 300 of the white doll versions. And, and you can get one for 14 grand. That's crazy. Um, it just doesn't get the love. And so would, would the Milgauss, you know, end up like that? It, it, it would, you know, everybody would, would raise their prices like that. But then after a while we'd be like, yeah, Milgauss. I mean, it was never that popular anyway. It's kind of a funky watch. It's kind of a, you know, the Milgauss is popular because of what's happening with the sub and the GMT and the Daytona, you know? Um, but if those were available, the Milgauss would still be kind of the, one of those watches that, mm. you know, that's why it's so cool because it's sort of, uh, it's a, it's a funky, um, oddball of a watch. Um, but if they discontinued it, you know, I don't know if it would go down as like a classic or just sort of like a, huh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure, but they might discontinue it. We didn't see any, any sign that they're they're going to have that. That's, that's kind of shocking to me. I mean, I guess they could just wait and do it next year. Um, yeah. And then if they do have it again, is it going to have the, the Faraday cage? So again, that's something I'm really looking forward to. And, and definitely, uh, the, the one I'm most looking forward to is the GMT because I love the, I love the, the two tone root beer. I, I'm, you know, I was telling this to my friend. I was saying that, you know, I'm not a two-tone guy and um, I, I'm a steel guy. I mean, if you watch any of my stuff, you you know that. Um, but but I'm, I'm starting to get kind of bored with steel steel pieces, you know? Uh, and so, yeah, I, I kind of can imagine go, going two-tone. Wow, super chats coming in. All right. Shama says, which GMT uh, is going, Austin? Root beer? Which GMT is going? Um, you mean, which would I go for? Clarify that because I don't quite understand. But, oh, which one is going away? Maybe that's what he, he means. Um, I, it's got to be it's got to be the the BLNR. It's been around for, for 10 years. It's the least popular of the bunch. I think it's time has come and gone, but maybe not maybe they're going to keep it around it's a great question uh do i think they're going to get rid of the root beer no i don't think so that's would be crazy tim wright thank you man wow hey tim wright he does uh shows of his own as you guys know and uh, he's supporting my stream so i support his stream he says great stream austin we will also be talking about this teaser later on feel free to join in on the fun I just might do that. Thank you. Thank you for the invite, Tim. Yes. Um, well, let's see. Yeah, I was talking about the root beer. So I'll say one more thing about the root beer. But yeah, what's going on with me is is I feel like, um, you know, I feel like I've been eating and breathing steel pieces for the last 10 years and I'm getting a little bit tired of them. And so I'm thinking, I want to mix it up a bit. And so uh, a two-tone piece is actually starting to really uh, appeal to me. And and my favorite of the bunch is, is certainly the, the root beer. And Tim Wright says, cheers, Austin. Cheers to you. Cheers to you, man. Yeah. I believe I'll be going on a stream. Yeah. Here, I'll keep that right there. Um, so, yeah. But uh, um, we'll, uh, we'll look at a few, a few uh, comments from you guys. Because, you know, I've just been monologuing here. Uh, yeah, okay, here we'll go through. So Shamba says, where's the Millie? Good question. I don't know. It's going to be crazy if they discontinue it. I, I just feel like they can't. It's, it's their science watch, right? Yeah, I know. I know. They don't need it. They don't need a highly magnetic 
uh, resistant watch because they all kind of do that. But but it's it's got a it's got a a, a soul to it. It's got a, a a character to it. The same way that the the sub does and the GMT and it, and it's you know it's a science watch. What are the scientists going to wear, right? I'm looking for question marks here. So who's the collector who bought Boba Bax instead of Daytona's back in the day? Uh, what's, what's the interesting question is, what is the Daytona of today? It, is it the Milgauss? Is it the Turner graph that I just mentioned? I don't know. I have a feeling, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a whole nother, whole nother uh, thing. A um, whole nother show we could do. Future classics. Batman or Pepsi Austin? Waster Jubilee. Oh, okay. So I would definitely say the, the Batman on a Jubilee. Although I hate the way people call it Batgirl. Um, but it, it does look a lot more feminine and a little bit more like jewelry. So yeah, I mean, the, the Oyster bracelet is really nice. But of course, you got this polished middle links. But the Pepsi, here's the thing about the Pepsi. The Pepsi just gets the love, man. The Pepsi really, it, it's just, it's it's the archetype, right? It's the archetype. Shamba says, no, which one is being discontinued? Okay, right. Yeah, I don't I don't think the I don't think the the root beer will. In fact, they need to get a, a Jubilee bracelet on it. And it looks like we're getting more gold or two-tone GMT is. So yeah, uh, BLNR, I think. But you know what? The only reason I really was saying that BLNR is going to be discontinued is when I was thinking they were going to come out with the, with the righty Sprite, which, uh, all right, we know that at Not Your Watches was jerking us around. and um, And so... Yeah, forget that. I, I think it's going to stay in the catalog, to be honest. I don't think they're going to discontinue the BLNR until they've got something to replace it with. They can't They can't just have one steel uh, version. But it would make perfect sense for the Coke to come out and then discontinue the B, BLNR or a righty Sprite, but eh, that's not going to happen. In fact, Rolex says that it, it's an exclusive for that model. You can find that on the website. All right. Thurston Howell the third. Thank you. $1.99. Uh, super chat. Batman or Pepsi Oyster Jubilee. Oh, I already did that. Okay. So yeah. Batman on a Jubilee. Final answer. But I got to give props to the Batman on an oyster because oysters are more masculine. You know, you can't beat the, the look of the 16710 on an oyster with the polished middle, with a, sorry, with the uh, brushed brush bracelet. I mean, that just looks so cool. It looks a little kind of retro and funky with the Jubilee. So, all righty, what else do we have here? Can't let you go without pointing it out. Did you see the GMT bezel on the teaser? Would it not be red for Coke? Yes, we we talked about that, Wes. Uh, good point. It it could look it could look red, yeah. And and the twenty four hour hand looks red, but then that clearly looks gold. And so I just don't know if red and gold looks good together. I can't even picture it in my head. So I can't wait to see that. Do you think there's room for two two tone GMT watches? No, not really. I mean, it would be crazy if they had a, you know, a, a, a sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, if they had not the rose gold, but the, the yellow gold, like a yellow gold and a rose gold root beer, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. But, you know, if they had yellow gold, everything was black except for the numerals. And that would look so beautiful. In fact, I can, I can just pull this. Let's see if I can find it again. I think it was right here. 
I mean, if they just had, if they had, everything was black except for the hands, the gold surrounds, the white, the the gold on the on the ceramic, and then the crown. I mean, and and then of course the the center links. That would look so beautiful. I mean, it would be black and gold, black and gold. Oh, that would look beautiful. Although, yeah, they would have to have the 24-hour hand gold as well. It, it would certainly work, but I would be shocked to see it right next to the to the the root beer because just Rolex is too much is too much choice for Rolex. They just they 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 really don't give us a lot of choices. Um, the one exception of that, of course, is the Yacht Master. I feel like there's so many Yacht Masters that line has just gotten crazy um but yeah yeah i I, i'm i'm really gotta gotta check that out all right let's see what else i'm i'm looking for i don't actually read everything but i i look for for question marks wait before that okay we got uh, one from jonathan all right, we're going to wrap it up probably in the next five minutes here. I'll just time it on the icon. All right. Won't it be insane if Rolex gives the option for a sunburst brown dial for the root beer? Right. Sunburst brown. That would be crazy. Yeah, that would I mean that would be like, you know, the, the older 16713s, which, hmm, those are so cool because they're i mean they're so ugly they're cool they're so retro they're cool but not for everybody those have really gone up and they used to be lemons by the way here in japan i mean you could you could get those cheaper than the the steel ones and and it's it's switched they've 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 come back with a vengeance and there it's really hard to find good ones now um i can't imagine Rolex would do that but yeah, that could look kind of cool. I think I think the I think the root beer is perfect right now. I mean, I just I wouldn't change anything. I think the root beer is is probably the best looking two tone in, in the catalog, and it's just a fantastic piece. Will Rolex discontinue the green Daytona anniversary year? Ah, yeah, good question. I would look at how long it's been around. I think like 10 years is like a good run. Although, you know, um, that, that that certainly didn't apply to the Oyster Perpetuals. I don't know what was up with that. I can't explain that, why they did that. Other than we liked it so much, they thought, oh, you like it so much? Well, we're going to give them, we're going to make day dates for you now. Okay. And, and you can spend, you're going to spend crazy money on these dials. Well, we'll give you a reason to spend crazy money day dates. So that's the only reason uh, I, I can see for them keeping it around for keeping those around for just one year. Um, so yeah, I don't know when the green Daytona came out, but yeah, when it does, that's going to go gangbusters on the second hand market. All right. And I think this will be the last question. Gold and black ceramic bezel explore. Yeah, well, I think I think they're definitely not going to go ceramic with the with the explore. Oh, oh, you were th- saying explore. I was thinking explore too. Yeah, that's sort of that's just too crazy for Rolex. I mean, I think a lot of us thought myself included that the Explorer 2 was gonna go ceramic, but it didn't. And I, and I don't think it will. And I just think it's a little too much for them. And, and I'll tell you why. And this is something I, I meant to make in a video and I'll probably, um, I'll give you guys sort of a, a, you know, a live version of it, but Rolex, I think doesn't want the old watch to they, they want their new watches to alpha male their old watches. Okay. And so that's why, you know, if you think about the Explorer 2, the, the new one 
you know, it's got the newer movement and really it doesn't look any different. So it, it alpha males, the old one, right. But if they had, if they had put a ceramic bezel on it, then people would fixate on that, on that end of an era, um, metal bezel, you know, the, all, all of those, you know, from, from the 1655 on up to the, you know, the, the last of the metal bezel versions. And so I don't think they want that. I think they, I think they want, I think they want everybody that has the current one to want the new one. And I think the way they do that is to really just offer no, nothing better in terms of aesthetics, just, you know, improvements in, in terms of the, the movement. And that's why I think, for example, the, the Milgauss, they're not going to change the aesthetics of that because it, it only will, um, you know, it, it reinforce this idea of, oh, it's the end of an era with the Milgauss. So I think we'll get, you know, like maybe crown guards or something that's it. So, all right, guys, great show. Thank you for everybody who, who super chatted and supported the show. Thank you for Brian for jumping on. Uh, I think this was a great teaser. Uh, really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited about a lot of the things uh, that hopefully we're, we're, we're going to see. And, um, and I will see you on the next live show, which will be scheduled sometime. And we will watch these reveals live. I want to say it's the 27th at 8.30 a.m. Geneva time. If you're in Japan, that's going to be three in the afternoon. And if you're in if you're in the States, it's, it's the middle of the night. So set your alarms. All right. I'll schedule that soon. So stop by my channel and you will see it. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time.